hi, thanks for watching my video. So I've been really getting into my experiments lately. Been testing all kinds of things in The Sims 4, you know, how Sims react to certain things. So I thought today we would do an experiment that I guess is kind of a twist on some of the experiments we've done before. I've previously done experiments where I just plonk a load of Sims in a situation and then just observe them. Just see what they do. And that's kind of what we're doing today. We're going to be testing The Sims 4, but with a little bit of influence from The Sims 1. So I have two Sims here, Annabelle and Mason. They're two single Sims, desperately looking for love. They both have the soulmate aspiration. Here's the thing though, they are worst enemies. They despise each other. And one thing I've learned about The Sims 4 is that it's a happy rosy play. Nothing bad ever really happens in The Sims 4. And I've seen experiments where, and I've done experiments where I've put Sims in a house who don't like each other, only to find out that they've become friends. So today we are going to be observing these two for two days to see whether they can overcome their differences and their hatred for each other and actually build some kind of positive relationship together. They are trapped in this doll's house. There isn't a way for them to get out unless they can magically jump off of the ledge, which I don't think they can. So there shouldn't be any escape for these two. So I'm just thinking, let's just watch what they do and see what they get up to. I say this has been inspired from The Sims 1 because the idea for The Sims 1 in the beginning, oh, Mason's not happy, he's taken it out on the teddy bear. You know who did that in my last experiment, Mason? A pregnant teenager. You're acting like a teenage girl. How do you like that? Yeah, I, I say it's been inspired from The Sims 1 because before The Sims 1 came out, it was originally planned to be a building game. And Sims were not designed to be controllable in the, in the early days when planning had just began. They were actually going to be little people that live in your builds and they review your houses and tell you whether they like the house you've built for them. And then from there the idea was expanded on to make them fully controllable and then it became a full life simulation game. So we've kind of taken inspiration from The Sims 1 in that we're not going to be controlling these two Sims. We're just going to be watching them in this doll's house. I thought doll's house might be a good idea because usually I'm just following Sims around the house anyway. So at least in this format it gives me good access to be able to see everybody at the same time. So I guess we'll just see if these two completely avoid each other or if they interact in any way from now until Thursday morning. Annabelle's just doing a little bit of reading, learning about space. Maybe she's into astrology. Mason's still beating up the teddy bear. And the teddy bear is pretty pissed off with you, Mason. Looks like you're going to have two enemies in this house. So, good job you. He isn't even in a bad mood. What's your fucking problem there, Mason? Huh? I did also give them um, some negative traits as well. So Annabelle is romantic, jealous, and high maintenance. And Mason is self-absorbed, romantic, and mean. So I wanted them to both have the romantic trait. You know, I thought maybe that might help the situation. But I guess we'll see. You guys are really just going to do the same thing. Mason's just going to beat up the teddy and you're just going to keep reading books. Well, this is going to be an entertaining video. Oh, Mason, hey, look, the guy from the welcome wagon has the same shirt as you. Must be in style. Come on, guys, you're going to have to do something together at some point. One of you's going to get hungry at some point. This can't be right. Surely a sim will not spend five solid hours beating up a teddy bear. Oh, we have our first toilet action of the day. How is it using the toilet in the open air there, Annabelle? I did worry whether having a completely open house would mean that they're a little bit more reserved when it comes to taking baths and maybe woohooing. Maybe when the experiment ends, I'll see if I can get them to woohoo in the bed without being like shy or anything. I mean, this experiment started at 9am. So Christy has, uh, so Annabelle hasn't eaten for like going on six hours and it's still green. Don't make no sense. I think Annabelle's just going to keep reading for the whole rest of the experiment. But it looks like Mason has started doing some cooking at least. What are you making there, Mason? Is that some eggs and toast? Oh, well done. You started a fire. Well done, mate. You live in a doll's house as well, so there's, like, no way anyone can help you. I think he's going to die. I think this might be the end of the experiment. Oh, shit. This is bad. This is, this is bad. 
I think this might be the end of the experiment. Just try and extinguish Mason before he dies. Okay, I think Mason is extinguished. Okay, the fire's been put out. Wow, you literally just saved my life. Well done, Annabelle. And it looks like they've gained some kind of friendship from that now. I mean, they still hate each other, but you could probably do with quite a few things now, Mason. Maybe start with a bath. That's what I would do if I were you. Oh, that was stressful. That's right. Have a nice, relaxing bath. And just try and forget that little, that little mishap you had there. What's Annabelle doing? Annabelle, I'm not being funny, but you're being really fucking boring. Don't look at me like that. You are. You know what? I'm actually going to delete these books because I feel like Annabelle is completely milking the situation. What, what are you doing? How are you still reading the book when it's on the floor? What's going on? Let's just delete the book as well. There we go. What are you going to do now, Annabelle? Oh, I did give them a washing machine as well to see if they would instinctively clean up after themselves. So now you're just going to play on your phone now that you don't have any books to read. Oh, there's just nothing about you, Annabelle. Why don't you guys talk to each other? Well, Mason's probably going to be kept busy because he has to use the toilet and eat. And he also has a low social need. So, I mean, he's pissed the bear off. So it's not like he can be friends with the bear. So what do you guys want to do? I deliberately gave you little things to keep you busy so that you would either interact with each other or maybe do some chores around the house. Like maybe some laundry, maybe. Oh, okay. That bath time has made Mason rather playful and now he's wanting to do some laundry. And even Annabelle's cleaning up now too. Oh, good job, guys. Well, I see you got yourself some crackers, Mason, but did you actually turn the washing machine on? Or you just put it in the washing machine, huh? Decided not to bother actually washing your clothes? Yeah? Okay. What are you eating there? Some yogurt? Well, Mason's done a pretty good job of fulfilling his needs. Oh, I think Annabelle is going to wash the laundry. So Mason put it in, but uh, Annabelle's going to clean the clothes. That's very good of you, Annabelle. Well done. Well, now that you guys have done pretty much the only activity you have... I'll just walk straight past each other like the other one just doesn't exist. And she's cleaning up Mason's bowl after him. You guys have barely said two words to each other. I wonder if I, just as an, uh, an experiment within an experiment, I wonder if I sit them both at this table where they're facing each other, will they spark conversation or will they just stare at each other angrily? You guys going to talk or... You just hate each other that much. No words have been spoken yet. Just playing on their phone. Really? You guys aren't even gonna, like, ask a single question or... You know what I might do? I might just give it until Wednesday at 9am and then that way we can observe... Yeah, he's fucking off now to go and see the teddy. And that way we can observe 24 hours of two enemies and then... After 24 hours, I'll turn them into lovers and see if that makes a difference. Because I'm, I'm curious to see if they're completely, like, avoiding each other because they hate each other. Are you going to get yourself something to eat there, Annabelle? What are you making? Are you going to start another fire? you making a grilled cheese? Let's see if you can get away with not burning the house down. Maybe you're more of a natural cook than Mason is. Oh, well done for not setting the whole house ablaze. What's the problem? What can't you get to? Oh, it's because they wanted to react to first snow, but they can't because they can't leave the doll's house. Well, Mason, I guess, has bugsied himself the bed. So that's very gentlemanly of you, Mason. So I guess Annabelle's sleeping on the sofa. As soon as she finishes doing the washing. That's so good of you. Now she's putting it in the tumble dryer. Watch laundry. God, what a life. What a life to have the kind of spare time to be able to watch the laundry. And now she's reflecting on how brave she was when she saved Mason from that fire and how he repaid her by giving himself the only bed in the house. Hungry for attention from low social and self-absorbed traits. Don't you slam that fridge door. That fridge costed money. Fucking stomping around the house, slamming shit around. There is a perfectly good sim here that you could socialise with if you weren't so frickin' stubborn. Don't blame me that you're not getting enough attention. I notice neither of them have served food. They've only made food for themselves. Neither of them have made, like, group meals or anything. Which I guess makes sense, you know. If you're locked away with your enemy, you're not exactly gonna be making them scrambled egg in the morning, are you? 
I remember in The Sims 2, if you had two people living together who were real enemies, one of them would eventually run away and be like, that's it, I cannot stand the tension in this house, I'm leaving. But in The Sims 4, you know, they just tolerate each other, they just make like the other person doesn't exist at all. Admittedly, though, I did think they would at least, you know, say something to each other, or at least acknowledge that the other one exists in some way. Annabelle, you must be tired. You haven't been to bed yet. You haven't had a wink of sleep. I wonder if she's going to go to the bedroom and see that he's in the bed and then be like, oh, and then go downstairs and sleep in the sofa. Looks like the... Oh, no, you're cleaning up some rubbish. Okay. I feel like one of those child sims who has, like, the doll's house in their room. Only instead of playing with dolls and using my imagination, I have dolls that do things for themselves and I'm just watching them like a creep. What's the plan now? You're just working on that laundry? If you want Sims to be good at housework, just don't give them anything fun to do at all and they'll, they'll just start cleaning up after themselves because of sheer boredom. That seems to be what's happened here. She's dazed from watching laundry spin. Annabelle is so dizzy, her head is spinning like a whirlpool. It never ends. Okay. Well, we've seen how you guys behave when you're enemies. I think it's probably a good time to see what happens when you put two lovers in a doll's house for 24 hours. You both have very low social needs, so I'm hoping that you guys will just automatically fix that with the uh, change in relationship type. So this time we will go true friends... True loves. Let's see if that changes the way they hang out together. Oh, he's immediately flirty because of his romantic trait. He's always had that romantic trait, though, and this is the first time he's been flirty the entire time. You flirting with the teddy bear and slapping the teddy bear. What is it with you and hitting this teddy bear? Annabelle, I think, is going to go and have a nap because she's so dazed. Oh, she's feeling lonely. Oh. I think maybe it's because he's tense, that's why he's hitting the teddy bear, because he just really wants some attention. Well, you know, you have a, a lover in here who has just woken up, although she's tense from having a really weird dream. What even was that dream? Oh, finally, we have some social interaction. Are we going to be fulfilling our social need, finally? I mean, they're both feeling a bit tense, but hopefully nothing that can't be solved with a little bit of gossip, a little bit of chit-chat. Maybe a little bit of flirting. You gonna do a little stretch? You sick of being cooped up in this little this little box house? What's on the menu now? Ham and cheese sandwich? Very exotic. Why are you sad from shared sadness? But Annabelle isn't even sad. She's just a bit tense because she had a weird dream. You gonna go cry under the bed even though you're happy? So already, like a huge change, like all of his queued up actions are no longer about beating up the teddy bear. It's all like chatting with Annabelle. So one thing I, I've taken away from this is that there is some logic to Sims communicating. They do prefer to communicate with other Sims they have a good relationship with. But one thing I'm disappointed by is that if you put Sims who are worst enemies, they just don't communicate with each other. They basically act like the other doesn't exist. And to me, that just doesn't make sense. Like, I would rather they argue all the time and get in scraps and fight each other and attack each other and, you know? I would rather they just did that autonomously if they really didn't like each other rather than just pretend the other one isn't there. I think Annabelle's getting pretty tired, so she's probably going to go to bed at some point. I have my autonomy on full as well. I wish there were some things Sims would do without you telling them to, like... These two who have, like, the highest relationship possible and are in a flirty mood. Still, all they really do is, like, hug and have suggestive conversations. Like, I wish they would autonomously, like, make out with each other or autonomously go and woohoo. Still feels like there are a lot of limits as to what my sims will do without my input. Like, ideally, they would just go crazy with the autonomy on full and it would be my job to try and manage them. You know, I want to feel a little bit of challenge in like jumping in at just the right time and be like, no, that's not a good idea. Don't do that. But I don't really have to ever worry about that. I mean, I could walk away from this house right now and come back in like an hour or two and nothing bad would have happened and nothing great would have happened either. Oh, we're back to beating up the teddy bear. 
Well, Annabelle's awake. Annabelle's awake now, and she's also feeling quite flirty. Cheeky kiss, perhaps? Or are you guys just gonna chat from the stairs? Just having a full-on conversation halfway up the stairs? Yeah, sure. Why not? The main difference between going from one extreme in a relationship to the other is that they talk to each other. That's about it. I would dread to think what would happen if I did this experiment in The Sims 1 or The Sims 2. What it would lead to. What kind of chaos would ensue. At least you've got your spaghetti. I just wish there was a way I could get my Sims to wreak havoc on each other, you know? Kind of seems like the only extreme, the only things you can do to try and influence Sims' behaviour autonomously is to put them in a mood or change their relationship with the Sims around them. And even then, there's not that big difference of behaviour. I could put all of my Sims in a very angry mood and all they would do is just stomp around, like... They wouldn't fight each other or anything. And if I put all my sims in a very flirty mood, they wouldn't woohoo or anything. Again, they would just talk flirty to each other. At least now they can sleep in the same bed, though. So we don't have to be sleeping on the sofa anymore. No night, God bless. Hopefully you don't have another weird dream, Annabelle. It's 8am. One hour left of the experiment. Well, you know what? We're in the final hour now. It's Thanksgiving. I said that I wasn't going to take control, but we've observed them for four days now, and I think what they have proven to us is that they're pretty fucking boring. So how about we have a little woohoo, which they can't do because they haven't even had their first kiss yet. That's fine, we'll go do the first kiss now. Because I know Sims sometimes get a bit shy when getting nude in uh, open-air environments like this. But they've been fine, you know, using the toilet and having a bath. So I feel like they wouldn't really have much problem woohooing in a bed that faces another house and a forest. Why don't you go woohoo with Mason? Just put the past in the past. We won't be enemies anymore. We'll seal it with a shag. And that's 9am. 48 sim hours. Half of them as enemies, half of them as lovers. What have we learnt? Well, we didn't really learn much, did we? <laughs> Maybe I should have given them a bigger house, a little bit more space to roam around. But I was quite conscious to not give them too much to do because I wanted to see how they would interact with each other. Because I've done experiments before where I've given them stuff to do and they've just kind of done the same things on a loop. I was happy to see them doing laundry though. In previous experiments where I've given them um, washing machines, they usually don't do their laundry, mainly because they have other things to do. So that was something. <laughs> but on that note, I'm going to end this video here. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. You know I love it when you do that. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.